Welcome back to Rules. Today on February 6th, we're going to call this meeting to order with my brand new mallet. Um, if anybody would like to see it, I call it the mullets, as uh, Chairman Watson just acknowledged. Uh, let's start with a word of prayer. How about Senator Walker? You look like you're in a praying mood. I need prayer. What's your number there? Number on three, mind, number, one in your heart. number one in our hearts. <laughs> Go for it. Bow with me, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come here and, and try to serve the people of Georgia, Lord. We pray that you will uh, lead, guide, and direct us in our deliberations and that what we do be pleasing to you. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you there, Mr. Secretary. Um, first order of business, we've got a new member to the committee who's no stranger to this committee, been on it before. Uh, Senator Harold Jones is joining us. And uh, Senator Jones, if you'd like to introduce yourself, tell the members of the audience where you're from and and give us a full 30-minute bio. That's right, Mr. Number 11. Uh, State Senator Harold Jones uh, out of Augusta, Georgia, representing Senate District 22. All right, he's going to yield the rest of his time. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, no, out of order, out of order. Um, all right, so I do have a special guest with me as I introduced on the Senate floor today. I've got my mother here. Uh, if y'all notice, I have uh, not allowed her near a microphone, and I will continue not to do that because I don't want any stories out there. Uh, so, Mom, thanks for being here and watching me in action. So I'll try not to disappoint you. Okay. All right, on to our consideration for the calendar. First up, I've got SB1, our uh, good senator from Forsyth County. If you would just give us a quick overview. Good. Mike is yours. Good. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chairman. We're not quite to noon yet. Uh, Senate Bill 1 is simple. It just strikes the expiration date for the protections that we passed last year. And Senate, Senator Mullis's bill, I believe, is Senate Bill 356, that prevented the discrimination by government against its citizens based on vaccination status of COVID-19. OK. Any questions from committee? Seeing none. All right. Uh, SB 26, you've still got the floor. You've been a busy little boy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Following your lead. Uh, Senate Bill 26 allows development authorities and CIDs to conduct their business via teleconference. We obviously learned during COVID uh, how much business can be conducted via teleconference. This still requires the proper no notice uh, posting of the agendas of those meetings. And if the meeting is a public hearing, allows full public participation over teleconference the same way it would if the meeting was held in person. Okay. Any questions from the committee? Seeing none. Thank you. All right. Uh, Senator Randy Robertson out of Catala, Georgia. You've got SB 36. Can you walk us through that? Yes, sir. Briefly, uh, SB 36 addresses two categories of sex traffickers, uh, those who participate in pimping and those who participate in pandering. What this does is it uh, changes the penalty provision and makes any arrests for, th for those charges felonies, whereas now uh, first arrest on each of those are now uh, misdemeanors. Conviction. No, sir, Is arrest. that in the form of a question? Yes. Okay, Thank I'm you. recognizing you, my vice chairman. Thank you, sir. Said they uh, typically somebody gets arrested, they're, don't they get to go through a trial whether they're convicted of a felony or not? Yes, sir, but uh, the charge they're arrested on Georgia Code determines if that's okay, just a, the a charges. misdemeanor or a felony. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions from the committee? All right, SB 37, Senator Robertson, you've been busy as well. Did, do y'all walk hand in hand to the ledge council together? Not, not the where the there? cameras can see us. Okay, all right. Um, SB 37 is a piece of legislation that's strongly supported by the Georgia Sheriff Association. What this does is add a qualification requirement for those who wish to run for the office of sheriff that, that would require them to be post-certified law enforcement officers for seeking that position. Questions from the committee? <clears throat> Senator Walker. Uh, Chairman Robertson, 
this sounds familiar to me. Did, did has this been introduced in the past, and if so, what happened? Yes, sir. It was introduced, passed through the Senate, got over to the House, and December 25th rained down upon it. It became a Christmas tree over there for them. A lot of other things were added to it, and it did not uh, get off the floor of the House on the last day last year. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right, any further questions? All right, Senator Rett. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So currently, a person can run for sheriff and not be post-certified? He has to be post-certified within a certain amount of time. Right. What, what they, what, the problem that we've had is an individual runs for sheriff, they're elected sheriff, they fail the academy, therefore the probate judge has to appoint a sheriff and call for a special election. And what this would do would require them to have the qualification to begin with, as we do with district attorneys and other officers of the court, that they have to have the credentials before they can fulfill, before they can fill the position. So Barney Fife or anyone like that? That individual from a scripted television show would not be qualified to run for the sheriff of Mayberry. Uh, not that I'd know if Andy was when he ran. Okay. Yes, sir. All right. Uh, your brethren from Muskogee County down there has got a question for you. Senator Harbison. Thank you, Senator. Just very briefly, is there a physical requirement component in your bill? In the, in the police academy, there are multiple things you have to do. There's a state PT test that's recognized by the Georgia State Patrol, the GBI, and everybody else. It's uh, a test that I'm absolutely sure the, the gentleman from District 15 would have no problem passing, but it is part of it. It's part of the academy. There's law tests. There's, um, there's a driving aspect of it where they have to go to gyp stick and do the emergency vehicle ships. operation course. This is for any post-certified law enforcement officer in the state of Georgia. Yes, sir. Thank you. Any further questions? All right, with that, let's pick a few. Ready to go to work tomorrow. All right, first pick, we're going to go with the nonpartisan president pro tem of the Senate, John F. Kennedy, Senator from Macon. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that honor. Um, nice to have the first pick. Thinking of first, we'll take, think of uh, the first bill, SB1, please. SB1. Okay, next up, let's go with the majority leader, Steve Gooch. All right. I will uh, cross <coughs> over 26 and go to SB36 so we can get both of these senators a chance in the well tomorrow. Okay. SB36 by Gooch. All right, Madam Leader, our minority leader, Glory Butler, would you like to have a pick? Twenty-six is fine. Twenty-six. All right. Let's see. Is three enough, or should we do one more? Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Um, how about the dean of the Senate, Senator Ed Harbison? Would you like to have the final pick of the day? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I'll pick uh, thirty-seven. Oh, good choice. Good choice. <laughs> Tough choice, but good choice. Okay. So with that, I've got on the docket for tomorrow, SB1, SB26, SB36, and SB37. Got a motion from a majority leader and a second from Senator Beach. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion passes unanimous, and we got some work to do tomorrow. Thank you all for being here. Thank Meeting adjourned.